Hello, I'm JW, and it's time to look at a plug socket. Now, of course, a plug socket is a thing which has a plug on one side, and of course, a socket on the other side. It is not one of those things in the wall where you shove a plug in, because of course, that's a socket outlet. And this particular item was sent in, and it's mainly been sent in because of what this actually is. Now, this uh, is, as they say, as a plug, has a hole in the bottom for the flex to go to the appliance, and then it also has another socket on the back. Now, apparently these things are relatively common in other countries, obviously with the appropriate countries plug on, but certainly in the UK these things are pretty much unknown. So let's have a look at the note that came with this, and also a couple of other items that are related to this. Now here's the note for this item, and uh, enclosed one plug socket item, and the plug socket item we're referring to is uh, this thing here, and also the one on the website, which I've got a picture of here, which is a similar device, but from a many decades ago. And the central idea is this is a piggyback plug, as we've got here. So essentially you wire this to the end of your piece of equipment, just a cable going in there, plugs in as normal, and then you can actually plug something else in the back. So uh, you can get another plug like this one, and plug that in there. And if you bought, say, a whole pile of these, you could just sort of stack them up and uh, put them all into one socket with some kind of wonky assembly coming out the back. It has a fuse in there, so 13 amps, as it states on the back there. And uh, this also claims to have surge protection in, which is its apparently main reason for being sold, though uh, obviously it does have this uh, extra bit in the back. And we can see it's got the shutters in there, so if you put the plug in the wrong way up, then the shutters will open, so that sort of exposes the uh, failing of that and many other extension lead type devices. Now, while these things obviously are available, this is pretty much the only one that uh, I've ever seen, apart from that old brown clicks one, and tell you even that took years to find. So the question really is, why aren't these things that more popular in the UK? And the reason is probably to do with the other choices that are available. Now, a major problem with this is you've got to actually wire it onto the end of a piece of equipment. And for a couple of decades, uh, if you buy a piece of equipment in the UK, it will actually be supplied with a plug already fitted, and the law actually requires that the plug is fitted. So the only circumstances you're going to have a piece of equipment where the plug needs to be replaced is one way you've either broken it or some other misfortune has occurred. So unlike uh, sort of 20, 30 years ago, when you particularly bought an item of equipment and it didn't have a plug fitted, you had to buy a plug separately and put it on. These days, it's going to come with a plug fitted as standard. So the chance of someone just actually putting a plug on themselves is pretty remote. And of course, if you're going to buy this for the use of this uh, piece here, You'd have to buy this, remove the plug that the appliance has already got, and then wire this thing up instead, just so that you can have the function of using the uh, socket feature on the back. So quite a lot of hassle there. And of course, what's uh, actually available in the UK is far quicker than that. And there's a few of these devices. This is uh, one of the uh, dubious choices that you've got. This thing just plugs in, so there's your uh, plug on that side. And then you've got two outlets here. So basically you can get two things shoved in at the same time. And uh, this particular style of the uh, two-way ones is a bit of a problem because there's no fuse in this. So in theory you could plug two 13 amp uh, items in here, sort of three kilowatts each, and then have uh, twice the rated current going through the actual socket. And there is also a uh, three-way version, which is this one. So it's got the three there, one on the top bottom and the uh, one on the front there same concept but these ones do actually have a fuse in so in case of uh, overloading you can only get basically 13 amps out of the whole thing and just have a look in there and we'll see it's just the usual 1362 fuse we've got there so uh, 13 amps uh, as you would expect so uh, these are better in that regard and they can't be overloaded but they're uh, certainly far from perfect and of course there's nothing to stop people getting one of these and uh, just plugging another one of these in and another couple on the top. So you can have this uh, appalling contraption where you can have sort of 20 different items all shoved into the same outlet. And so these are quite commonly available and these are very cheap. These are only a couple of pounds each or so and pretty much available uh, anywhere. Now these, uh, say, do have the problem of not being fused and the other problem is when you plug them in, of course they uh, stick out from the wall a very large distance and then of course you've got your plug to add into the uh, mix there as well and obviously then you have your other plug uh, going in the top here and very quickly you get this uh, huge block hanging out of the wall, knock this in the slightest, it's going to put a huge amount of strain on the socket and quite often break those out of there and that's aside from the overloading issue which we uh, just covered there 
And the other option, which is uh, thankfully becoming more common now, is to use things like these. This is a six-way version, but you can get them in anything from one up to about eight uh, individual sockets. They can be wall-mounted. And they just have the usual plug on the end, again limited to 13 amps because of the fuse inside. And uh, length of lead there is this is a short one, but again various lengths are available. So this is by far the most common choice to provide additional outlets. These are still available, but say, a bit uh, dubious there. So this type of thing really fails on the fact that you've got to actually wire the thing on. And say that's not something that uh, really happens these days, as all appliances are sold with a plug fitted already. So it's really just a question of convenience. It's just much easier to uh, just buy that and then just plug it in and use it, rather than buy that and then have to start wiring it and removing old plugs from it. Now let's see what the uh, general quality of this thing is like. I say it wasn't. Uh, so they sold him because it was anything wrong with it, but we'll have a look anyway, because uh, why not? We've got the thing here. So uh, that presumably will be the uh, cord grip. We'll just leave the one in to uh, retain and uh, take out these other two, which should open the bottom for where the appliance flex would go in. And I so say these things uh, should just wipe like an old plug. Yeah, there we go. So uh, flex grip, just the usual bar arrangement. And it's sort of got this. Uh, extra piece on here to cover over the hole, so you could probably get quite a large flex through that, which uh, might be of uh, value for certain applications. And then inside, just got the usual three terminals there, line, neutral and earth, all in a line in this particular case. Not marked uh, desperately clearly, but uh, just about to see the actual markings within the plastic, so line, and neutral and earth in the centre. And uh, that's as allegedly as far as you're supposed to go, but of course uh, we're going to be opening the top as well because we want to see what's inside and what kind of feeble surge protection we've got. Now given the physical side of this, there's not going to be a whole lot of surge protection in here, probably just a mob or something stuck across the supply. So let's uh, have those out of there and see what we've got. So uh, here's the uh, front here with the shutter. And as you saw there, it's just the standard thing where the earth pin presses down and obviously opens the shutters sprung loaded so they can uh, also go back in once the pin is removed. Little green indicator on the front. And we can see that the green indicator is what appears to be a neon. Those are the uh, ones which were orange ones, but it's got a phosphor sort of coating on the inside, so it will glow a fairly dull green. They don't tend to last very long either, the uh, phosphory covered ones. And then inside we can see the actual socket contacts here, just three of those. This is just the wires coming over to the neon, a little resistor under there, and uh, those just go across over the top there. Here's our fuse on the side, and again that's a 13 amp job. Of course normally accessed from the uh, outside here, so we should be able to uh, just push that out. Yeah, and there's the fuse, so it just comes out by the front. One of those SEM ones, which uh, seems to be a fairly common, uh, reasonable sort of brand. So it's fused, and we can see that the uh, pin here just connects directly to that, and then the actual uh, other side of the fuse is on the back here. So the 13 amps does apply to both the thing which is connected to the wiring and also the thing on the back. Now, one potential problem here is that if you wanted to connect something to this, which was not requiring a 3 amp fuse, such as a lamp or something, then you really can't because any fuse you put in here, if you put a 3 amp fuse in here, then whatever you plug in the front is also going to be on that same 3 amp fuse. So that's certainly not ideal. So that's come slightly out of place because the back would, of course, hold it in position. So let's see what we've got in here in terms of uh, alleged surge protection. Certainly uh, not a lot. It's just a spacer basically to allow other things to line up. So there's a little uh, neon indicator there. And yes, all we've got basically is the uh, line in neutral here. And we've just got a little wire tacked on which goes over to the what looks like a mauve in there, metal oxide varista. And then of course the neon which turns on when the thing is uh, presumably powered. So uh, yes, yeah, not a whole uh, pile of stuff. Let's just see how that is actually wired. So what we've got then is the uh, line comes in here, goes across this little black device, and then out of that we've got one lead goes via the very, very small metal oxide varista, goes to the neutral, 
and then that same white also goes over to that neon indicator via the little resistor here and then comes back to the neutral so uh, basically a sort of power on indicator and also the uh, extremely minute MOV so yes it does have surge protection but incredibly small not going to do a whole lot uh, in the case of anything uh, substantial there and then we have this black device which is probably a fuse of some kind which uh, in the case of it failing would therefore the green thing would no longer illuminate which could indicate that the uh, surge protection has either failed or whatever so uh, let's see if we can get any details on that so there we go it's a thermal fuse essentially it's 2 amp rating and 115 degrees centigrade so it's obviously heat shrunk onto the uh, MOV there so when this gets hot and uh, melts this also gets hot and it disconnects the uh, circuit so reasonably enough design there and uh, whether it's going to do much for surge protection is another matter but uh, nevertheless it's uh, Got a couple of alleged ratings on there, and again, line and neutral only, no connection to earth whatsoever. And uh, yeah, it's going to do something, but uh, certainly in terms of relying on it to uh, save your equipment, probably not really the uh, best choice. Now that's it for this time, and uh, you can see the picture of this uh, older plug and plenty more old stuff on the website at flameport.com. But until next time, thanks for watching.